So again, America is so insulated from the rest of the world, they have no idea how crazy it is. And, and what does Gerald talk about in history? When economic collapse accelerates, they always take you to war. They're trying, um, well, Gerald, I'm ranting. I set the table there. Uh, you want to tackle the geo, geopolitical stuff first, or do you want to get into Trump and the election first? Because, I, I mean, I know your view, but I want you to elaborate. Trump is the manifestation of the populist rebellion, and the RNC saying, officially, we're going to take the delegates and not give it to him. Will they really be that willing to be that naked? And are we reaching that magic moment now where the, where the scales come off the eyes and never go back again, Gerald? Well, first, I'd like to start with what you're talking about with Serbia and, and how that bloody war was started by the uh, Clinton administration, Bill Clinton. And Clinton's hands are filled with blood. People forget that he was bombing Baghdad and, and, and Iraq during his entire two terms. Matter of fact, that was one of the first things he did was bombs away over Baghdad. And, you know, I hear Hillary Clinton talking about her being a progressive liberal. And you look at their, again, the blood on their hands. There's that interview with Madeleine Albright, the Secretary of State under Clinton. And she's asked by Leslie Stahl, and anyone could, of course, Google this up, if the price of sanctions that Bill Clinton put on Iraq were worth the price of 500,000 Iraqi children under the age of five dead. And Madeleine Albright says, yes, it was. And then you talked about the Serbian war and all those Bernie Sanders supporters out there. You know, this Bernie Sanders, you know, you know, I, I know the act, the Coney Island Act, Bernie, save it. What they don't talk about is Bernie, B.S. Bernie, who plays, I voted against the Iraq war. He got people arrested for protesting Bill Clinton's Serbian Kosovo war. But they never talk about that either. On to the Donald Trump issue. The, the, I'm, there's things I like about Trump, things I don't. I'm not going to take a stand on it, but I do take a, a definite stand on this. You know, we held Occupy Peace over here uh, in Kingston this past September. And we put our own money into making it happen. We had Ralph Nader, Cindy Sheehan, Dr. Robert Thurman, uh, Gary No. And, you know, we stage closed down the street. And I got some jerk yelling out for Bernie Sanders and interrupting. I don't want to hear this stuff. You know, we had, you know, we, we have our own group of guys that know what we're doing over here. We quieted the situation down right away. If people want to go and protest, have their own protest. You don't go screaming and yelling when Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or anybody else is. It's screaming. very brown shirt. They come and link hands and say, excuse us, coming through, run you over, and then you're not allowed to defend yourself. They want a silent speech. They admit they want to shut Trump up. Well, if they can shut him up. They can shut any of us up. Exactly. They have no right. They have no right doing it. And to make the point where all these little liberals, you know, like the kind we have over here in Woodstock, you know, the phonies up there, try, try speaking out at a public meeting, a school board meeting, when your time is up. Try speaking out in City Hall. Try speaking out in the Senate BS committee meetings. Or congressional. Man, they got you locked That's right. Up They're trying to the shut floor. down citizen demonstrations. They're try the government's trying with social engineering to disrupt true populist movements. What I'm saying is you're not allowed to do it. You're not allowed to do it in any of those venues that I just talked about. What right does some clown with a big mouth and a bad attitude have to go into somebody else's show and yell and scream? They have no right at all. But to meet, again, go to your school board meetings, your city hall meetings, town hall meetings, Senate committee meetings, and try speaking out and interrupting. How long would they take it? And if you said, get this guy out of here, who is that? He or she, well, you're not condemned for it. But yet, when, you know, Trump saying, you know, who are these people every time I'm talking, disrupting me? People came from all over to come and hear me speak. And it's the same thing with me. If I'm speaking and having, I don't want somebody yelling out, put on your own show. They came here to hear me. They didn't come here. Well, that's right. He pays you. for arenas. He pays for the hangers. 
And then, I mean, it'd be one thing if he was doing it at the town square, then you could see some protests or something. But these are pretty much private events, and they're trying to attack free association. They're trying to take you our free it. speech away. And, they, and they'll go in with 100 people and space it out uh, to, to just ruin the whole event. Now, going to Chicago, you know, I, I may, was it Move On? Was it George Soros? Yes. Let's put something else into perspective here, just to make it really clear. And I'm not making this. George up. Soros is a way, war criminal, Nazi collaborator, piece of filth. I, I lived in Chicago for six years. Here it is. This is from last May, May, May 28th, 2015, from Chicago's Cranes Business News. Chicago is still number one for public corruption. It's ranked that high for like 40 years in a row. One of the most corrupt cities in the United States. And who's the mayor? Oh, Rahm Emanuel. Rahm Emanuel. Hey, did, wasn't he with the Bill Clinton gang? Yeah, yeah. What was he? Let's see. Rahm Emanuel, he was um, President Clinton's... Uh, the president for political affairs under Clinton, assistant to the president for political affairs, senior advisor to the president for policy and strategy, 1992 presidential campaign. He was the director of the finance committee. Oh, oh, and by the way, he he um, he was also President Barack Obama's uh, White House chief of staff. Oh, oh, Chicago, a uh, William Daly. You know the Daly machine. Oh, he was White House Chief of Staff under Obama and U.S. Secretary, uh, uh, Head of the Commerce Department, U.S. Secretary of Commerce under Bill Clinton and his administration. So let's add this up. I mean, look at the gang running the show over there. You think this did happen by mistake? You think they couldn't have quieted it down or seen it coming and done something? It's one of the most corrupt. It is the most corrupt city in the United States, and they showed it live. And that's the model of government they want. The late, great Aaron Russo, who, you know, produced a lot of big Hollywood movies with Eddie Murphy, you name it, who died of cancer in, in 2007 or was it 2008. I was talking to him right before the last few days he died, and he, he told the story about when he was first bringing Led Zeppelin to the U.S., and they'd have like 10,000 people at this theater he bought in Chicago. And first they came and said, give us protection money. He said, no. So they had the fire department come in and dump garbage everywhere in front of them. Then they had the inspector behind them to give them huge fees. And they said, listen, you give us the money. You let us see how much you're making. You pay it directly to the police and to us, or we're going to basically shut you down. He paid them off for a year and a half. Then the government itself, through a city official, opened another theater down the road, came in, dumped garbage around everywhere, beat him up. And the police took him in the back of the paddy wagon. He said, okay, I'm not resisting. And they said, we don't care. You think you're going to make money? And they literally began beating his testicles with the billy club. So you want to live under that, folks? That's who the, the Clintons and Obama are. They are literal Chicago machine mafia, and that's what they want. Gerald, is that what you're getting at? That's exactly what I'm getting at. Let's call it what it is. Oh, and by the way, where did Obama come from? Oh, Chicago, right. The community organizer that never organized anything. And who was the front for him? Oh, the Pritzker family. Pritzker, Hyatt Hotel. Oh, those Pritzkers. Oh, who's the Commerce Secretary? Penny Pritzker. Oh, where's Penny going now? To Cuba. What are they doing now? Oh, you think they'll open up any hotels? The game is rigged. It's the mafia, but not the, don't blame the Italians, man. Daly's not Italian. Rahm Emanuel's not Italian. Mafia comes in all races, creeds, and colors. So save it, folks. It's not well, sure, Italian. I don't bring this up because you're Italian, but, but we've talked about this many times at dinner. It's true. It's another great hoax. They branded the only organized crime as Italian, so all the real organized crime could sit there and operate and do whatever it wanted to. I've actually studied organized crime. The most powerful organized crime are the big robber baron families that own and run the whole show. It's not it's not guys shaking down, you know, uh, mom and pop stores in New York City. I mean, what a scam. Yeah, and what I've been saying, what I just mentioned to you about Chicago, nobody's talking about that. That is the most corrupt city in America. And look at the people running the show. You can't get closer than than the Obamas and Clintons and Democrats. So when a Republican goes in there, you think they're going to try to cut him out? Oh, by the way, 
Remember the uh, presidential race under Kennedy? And all of a sudden he wins Illinois? It's amazing. But, but instead of blaming their own corrupt government, it's fun to just go beat up some people that came out for free speech. And I was talking to folks that were there. A lot of them weren't even supporters. They just came to see what was going on, to hear for themselves, and hear of people attacking him. What do you make okay. of the mainstream media trying to legitimize arresting Trump? Are they not trying to set a precedent to really restrict free speech? I mean, I I'm supporting Trump just out of free speech alone. Well, again, what do we, you saw with the Republicans, I mean, it's been out there in the open. They're trying to derail his campaign. He's not a member of the club. And then you look at who is this Republican club? They got to bring out a little lightweight like Mittens Romney to come fight Trump. Look who the other Republicans are. Lindsey Graham, a, a Mitch McConnell, Ryan, a bunch of little nobody nothings. John Insane McCain. So that's the Republican establishment. That's why Trump is fighting against no one. And they're going to do everything they can to bring him down. And of course, the Democrats want to knock him out because he's the only real contender against them. Well, the Republicans are corrupt and bought and paid for, and the elite put weak leaders in so they can control them. They're scared of Trump because he is his own guy. Uh, and if, and the people elect him, you know, that's their issue. We need to keep him on a short leash if he does get elected. But I've never seen him hitting the panic button like this. But also look at Europe. Look at what else. Uh, I want to segue into the economy with you because, boy, have you been proven right with, with how this thing is starting to collapse. And I want to know how long you think they can cover up just how bad it's really gotten. But first, wow. UN rights expert, North Korea leader should be prosecuted. Another example of statism, Kim Jong-un threatening to blow up Seoul, South Korea with nukes, threatening to blow up Manhattan, threatening to attack Japan. The Russians, as you know, we'll put that up on screen for folks that just tuned in via TV or radio, um, that the, the Russians have, quote, threatened to invade uh, if they don't stop threatening World War III. Almost no coverage of this in our media, and I wanted to get your inside baseball take on why the Russians are suddenly pulling out of Syria, saying it's the ceasefire. Uh, I think it's something much bigger and very ominous. I'm not quite sure what, but I'm telling you, my spidey sense has never been redlining like this. You know, I don't know why they're doing it, and uh, but I don't think they're going to do much of it, is my my analysis or look at what, what I've been reading. And again, I'm on the outside over here. I think they're what they're saying is that we have a peace process going on. They're still bombing away. But they're going to start, you know, uh, bringing down their troop strength. And are they bringing it down because they're concerned about something else happening? Very likely. And with the North Korean situation, the other side of the story that's never told is the United States aggression over there as well, continually threatening them with all these so-called war games. And if you put somebody in a corner, they're going to react the way they are. Again, you know... I, was it was it North Korea that invaded Libya? No, no, I know. They're the ones that overthrew Iraq. No, no, it was North Korea that went into Afghanistan. Yeah, that's right. No, I, it was it's North Korea that said Assad has to go. You know what I'm saying? So the United States militarism, you know, it's freaking these people out. They don't know if they're going to be next. So, of course, they're threatening them. You blow me up, I'm going to blow up Manhattan. Sure, and I misspoke so earlier. What I was saying is Russia has threatened to invade North Korea. I mean, that is so unprecedented. Gerald, what do you make of that? That's what I was trying gonna, to get at. No, no, they're not going to Russia invade them. No, again, you know, what Russia's saying is that, as what the Chinese are saying, is they want peace in this area. And then they could see, look at the United States. You listen to the generals. You listen to this Ash, Ashton Carter. You listen to all of them. And it's pivot to Asia. China's our great nemesis. Absolutely. And now you got China building these sandcastles. But it's not just the Western elite that's out of control. North Korea is out of control. China's doing some saber rattling. Why would these governments suddenly all be going into a military mode? Why historically, Gerald, when we see economic collapse globally, does it take us to war every time? Why are so many yes. historians saying the climate is almost exactly like the beginning of World War I and all it's going to take is the wrong spark? Because, again, you, as you mentioned, the economies are collapsing. What happens when they devalue a currency? You keep hearing currency wars. So go back. You have a depression, a, a, a crash, a depression, currency wars, trade wars, world war. 
Look at the shipping indexes. They're at all time lows. Where's the biggest failures from Asia to Europe? So what's happening is everybody's fighting for a piece of the pie, devaluing their currencies, the currency wars. And by the way, that's not going to increase their trade. Global trade is down this year, last year, down almost 14 percent. Today, the retail numbers came out in the United States down. Oh, and by the way, Alex, they also revised downward sharply from a, uh, an increase of 0.6 percent in January. They, they've devalued it now to like a, a minus 0.4 percent in January in the retail sales. And then they have the, the, the audacity to say that we created 55,000 retail jobs in January and some 340,000 retail jobs last year as the retail sector is collapsing. So China's economy, you look at their debt bubble. It's gone from about 500 billion with a B 20 years ago, public and private debt. It's at 30 trillion now, 30 trillion. Look at their exports last month. They were down almost 20. Stay there, stay there. Percent. Trends Research, trendsresearch.com. Joel Salente, I want to briefly ask you, then go right to calls. If the world collapse has already begun in many areas, when will it finally be more evident here? And how do you think we'll try to paper over it? And what's the next shoe to drop? Is there any way to reverse this downward spiral? Gerald Salente is our guest. I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been working at InfoWarsLife.com that's about three and a half years old now for three years to bring the ultimate game-changing probiotic to you. We are almost there. We don't have that yet, but just there are a lot of great probiotics out there. That's something you obviously need. And, and they, they run the gamut, but it is very important to do the research because here's a big story out of Bloomberg yesterday, and we're going to our guest in your calls about how gut bacteria are shaking up cancer research. And it goes through uh, Roach Holdings and all the other big pharma companies, genetic engineering companies are saying at the University of Chicago, you name it, that the gut is dead, that kills your immune system, your body stops fighting cancer, you die. Now, this has been known since the time of Hippocrates, thousands of years ago, that health starts in the gut, to quote him. But another big part of that is true pure iodine, which according to our research, no one else really even has. It's all different types that are bound and you don't really absorb. X2 is a pure form of iodine injected into organic palm oil in a patented process, a secret process. And believe me, big companies have called us, tried to buy it, tried to figure it out. It's a true blessing that's fell into our hands uh, about a year after we had our other iodine out that was the best at that time. And was a similar process. We were just able to expand on it through Dr. Group's scientists. And everyone should be taking Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2. Here's the article, The Thyroid Gut Connection. And you can read about that uh, for yourself. Just type in thyroid uh, immune connection, and there's all these scientific papers out there. Look at it for yourself. Here's Anthony Gucciardi. Four years ago, Antibiotics could be to blame for skyrocketing mental illness rates, gets into the gut, gets into autism. All the stuff Wakefield said 20 years ago, then they demonized him and said he lied. He's since been exonerated. Well, now it's in Bloomberg. Now it's in the New York Times. Here's another one. McDonald's destroys the gut bacteria of a college kid in 10 days. They tested his, his, his you know what, before and then after, totally dead after 10 days. Uh, Tech Times, researchers find a link between gut bacteria and mental health. I'm just pointing out again, Huffington Post Science, the surprising link between gut bacteria and anxiety. It's all in your gut. Your brain and your gut are connected through nerves in the spine. It's, it's known. That's why you always say, I go with my gut. I go with my gut. I go with my gut. That's where your brain actually communicates. That's your brain inside of you going, behave yourself, do what I tell you. That's the subconscious. It's 100 times more powerful, something more than the conscious. The conscious is your limited focus. Your full brain power is your gut. That's your brain communicating a siren in your belly, folks. When my sixth sense goes off, it's in my gut, my heart, and right in my third eye, which is your pineal gland. It's just, it's like I'm, it's, 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 it's actually incredible because I can't stop thinking until I get the answer.
and it's always accurate. We're amazing creatures, folks. Use the gifts God's given you. And for my research and what it's done for me, you want to turn your body back on, your pineal, your thyroid, your gut, X2, InfoWarsLife.com. Now, I'm going to stop ranting about it, but it's important. Scientific American, mental health may depend on creatures in the gut. How gut bacteria is shaking up cancer research. The thyroid gut connection. I mean, just please, 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 please get X2 today. Now, I'm going to warn you. A lot of folks get diarrhea after a week and a half. A lot of people get, uh, like, de detoxing after about three weeks. It's because this is a big deal, folks, when your gut turns back on. And it's all right there in that thyroid. It's your brain, your thyroid, communicating through the nerves in your spine, into your stomach, into your gut. So when you get the willies or something, you know, you feel it in your gut. That, that's, that's what it's, it's, it's your body releasing endorphins, releasing chemicals, releasing uh, adrenaline. It's, we're a machine. We're amazing. InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, a lot of other specials. The food specials running one more day, 30 to 40% off. Take advantage of that as well. Now I'm going to stop ranting. Now you don't like to plug yourself, Gerald, and I apologize I couldn't come to your great event up in New York. I've been dealing with a lot of launch operations, family stuff, family illnesses, you know, it seems like things come in threes. All hell's been breaking loose for me the last year for good and bad. But uh, your trends forecast is so incredible. Your news alerts are so amazing. How do folks sign up to get your magazine? Because even if they know stuff uh, and think they know it all, I learn a lot of stuff from you. And it's also good to have the Trends Journal to give to people to hopefully wake them up as well. Gerald, how do folks subscribe to that? They could go to Trends Research, trendsresearch.com. And of course, beyond the Trends Journal, which is a quarterly, and you see what it is, it's you know, 54 pages, full color, no advertisements. We do a trend alerts each week. We have a Trends Monthly. That'll be going out next week, actually. And we also do Trends in the News broadcast each weekday night. So it, it is really, you know, in, in my humble estimation, the only place where you could read history before it happens, and we've been doing it since 1980. And let me explain you know, it. People need to also invest time and money in the liberty movement, all flavors of free expression and openness. That's how we build the new economy is with our actions, something you've been writing about for 30 years. Yes, and it is very important that people, you know, support the people that they believe in. You know, it's not going to happen. You have to, we talk about, you know, move on and all these other things that are funded by the, by the you know, the, the multi-billionaires and uh, if, it, if we, the people, don't make it happen and support each other, then we could see the future. It's they're going to be theirs, not ours. I'd like, you know, I'm very pro-probiotic, by the way. And, and I don't know if you know this, but this was the first book that I worked on. I did. Natural Healing. Wasn't that like fact, a number one New York Times bestseller? It was well, not this one, but another one very similar. This was a Warner book. It was a big book, 1988. And I also have a honorary doctorate uh, from the uh, of law from the Uni National University of Health Sciences for the work that I've done over the years in integrative and, and um, complementary medicine and putting out the information about it. And now I know you, you know, wrote about gut flora 30 years ago. How big a deal is it that now the top scientists are saying we didn't know this? It's incredible. It's incredible. This could this could reduce cancer by 80 percent. I mean, that's in the news now. Well, what I, you know, I'm also saying is that this is one of the great big trends that we're looking at in the whole element of, the, of what the products that you put out there. Whole health healing is the only way out. As we see it, there's not one drug on the market that cures a chronic degenerative disease. All they do is mask the symptoms. They don't cure you. Yes, you know, if I got, I got bit by a tick a couple of times, yeah, I go for those antibiotics, but then I also go for the probiotics and I do other things to heal myself and to build my system back up in a natural way. So I'm not saying I'm anti-drug. They have their place. Sure, there's a balance. But in, exactly, but not in whole health healing. So what I'm saying is that the people listening in to really pay attention to what you're saying in the whole context of it. You know, one of our top trends for 2016 is, you know, the baby boomers my being one of them, you know, this we're hitting 70 this year and we don't want to end up as inmates in nursing homes. So you want to stay healthy until you, you know, you, until the lights go out, basically. So I'm, I'm urging people to really consider listening to what you're saying, the products that you have available, because it's going to help them because the only way that I see this movement 
moving forward that we're interested in, and that is truth of life and peace and prosperity, is that we have to be in the best shape we can physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And I'm not talking religiously. I'm talking about the truth within yourself. So I'm just saying this because it's very important that people... We have to get healthy. We have to get centered. And, and for some of us that got out of shape, it's a long journey. But you get there and it's, 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 it's life-changing. Great points. Gerald Salente is our guest. TrendsResearch.com. Let's start going to your calls. George, Daniel, Dave, John, Mr. X, and many others. Toll-free number to join us after callers hang up. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Let's go to Connecticut first. Let's talk to George in Connecticut. You're on the air with Gerald Salente. Hi, Gerald. Uh, it was nice being up at that demonstration in Kingston, the beautiful town. Uh, yeah, that guy was a jerk, buddy. But maybe we can put that in our past. Anyway, my question is, uh, do you see any trends uh, leading to uh, maybe people finally getting up and, and stopping the corruption, whether state, local, or, or federal? Yes, because, clearly uh, there's massive, and I mean, stay there, I want you to follow up, but clearly, Gerald... What are other manifestations of the populist awakening all over the world going to be? Investigative journalism, lawsuits, people voting with their dollars. We see it all. Is it the discovery of the power we really have? Or uh, what are other manifestations you're looking for? Well, again, you know, it depends where you are. Look what just happened in Germany over the, the past week, Sunday. The AFD party, you know, got the biggest rise it ever has since the end of World War II. What are their stances? Anti-immigration. And, and pulling out of the eurozone, you put and, and and again, like them or dislike, and I'm not taking a stand on either of them. Why are people following Bernie Sanders? Because he's well. Besides, you're going to get a free free college tuition. And, you know. Besides that rap, he's going after the Wall Street gang, just as Trump is doing on another end. The people are ready. They're ready to move, as I see it. We need a unified movement without a political overtone to it to push us forward. The people are ready. You can see it by it, by the crowds turning out. Look at the look at the increase, for example, on the Republican end of the amount of people going and voting on primaries. And then they what claim that he's like? a divider when he's growing the party more than Reagan did. It's like what up, like forty percent? You know. And again, you're seeing go around the world. You're seeing it happen. The people want to live in peace. They don't want this stuff. And so what I'm saying is we need a unified movement, as I see it, to bring us all together. And not a movement, but a movement with, with directions, focus, and an well, action. Uh, exactly. I see it as an anti-globalist movement where the globalists can't be tax-exempt offshore and then reap the rewards of this country. Uh, because look at Jean-Claude Van Don coming out against globalism, Le Pen coming out against globalism, even the liberal mayor of London coming out against globalism in the EU. Uh, Anti-globalism is getting, which is really anti-neocolonialism. It's like the corporations are now conquering the countries and they're conquering the old world and the new world. Uh, and as people wake up to that paradigm, it's game over. George in Connecticut, you're on the air with Gerald Salente. Go ahead. Finish up your point. Yes, uh well, I, I, just, I, I have a specific reason for that because I've dealt with that myself. I've tried to help people locally and uh, when I uh, against a major uh, billionaire project. And what happened was uh, they used the police to come after me and, and threaten the life of my wife and myself and anybody that got into it. And I'm talking serious stuff, death, death threats, and they tra tracked me down. So this is the type of stuff people in the ordinary world does not understand happens that these people will use the police as a weapon as if there's some some crime and it's really the police are being used as thugs well that's certainly in a democratic party areas and i'm not saying the republicans are perfect they're very corrupt but with democrats from my research on average they're more of the chicago new york big city crime machine and that's where i see the police actually operate at least certain divisions of them they've got corrupt nest usually at the top uh that will actually engage in organized crime activities that's that's well known gerald is that an oversimplification because you know it's kind of like republicans tend to get caught cheating with a guy on their wife and then and then with democrats it seems to always be heterosexual it's just weird trends but but it does seem democrats 
are more of the old big city machine crime stuff. Is that an accurate statement or an oversimplification? I, I, I think it's where you, where you come from, you know. And, and again, to me, the Democrats and the Republicans, and I don't say this facetiously, are no different than the Bloods and the Crips. I mean, you, you, how many more people do they have to murder around the world in the name of bringing freedom and democracy? Oh, in a humanitarian mission like our Nobel Peace sure. Prize winner. In, and how much more of our dough do they have to steal in the names of too big to fails, TARP bailouts, loan guarantees, tax breaks, and all the other? So it, it, they're just different branches to me of the same corrupt, corrupt bloods in the crypts. Well, I just said we should just start giving him Nobel Prizes on a daily basis every time he bombs another country because this is their attempted inversion of reality. Thank you, George. Daniel in California, you're on the air with Gerald Salente. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, my question to you is regarding the whole uh, anonymous thing recently in the news, just like came out that they're on a full-on attack again on Donald Trump and wants to know what your views of anonymous well, are and who like funds them and everything. Do, do you want Gerald's or mine? Or, or both. Or Gerald, yeah, Gerald give us your view. You, well, again, you know, as I said, you know, they're going to do anything they can to stop Trump. They've made it very clear. Again, how could you play such a weak card by bringing out Mittens Romney, a total little loser, to attack Trump? They have nobody there. What you see is what it is. They're desperate. They will try anything. Who's going to stop Trump? Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham. I mean, who? It, it, they, so, of course, they're doing this. They're going to do everything they can. By the way, I see Donald Trump not as a Republican uh, candidate. I see him as a third-party candidate that moved into the Republican Party to pull off what he wanted to do. And by the way, that's how he sees himself, uh, just so folks know. A little inside baseball. Um, good, good point. Uh, Daniel, anything else? Well, I was just wondering, I know, like, uh, if if Trump were to ever not, like, get the Republican, uh, let's say, primary, do you think he would go third party? Or what would you think? You know, I think I, he's thinking about it, but he doesn't want to give it to Hillary. I want to get uh, Gerald's take on that. But getting back to Anonymous, my problem with Anonymous is this. Most of the Anonymous people are good folks, but it's Anonymous. Any group can just take the name Anonymous, and then it's, and then it's as if they speak as if they're a good organization. When you look at who is anonymous, it's not anonymous when it comes to Trump. It's Soros, it's Saudi Arabia, it's the Chinese Communist, it's the Pope. I mean, look at all these foreign groups lecturing us, Gerald. Why do you think they're lecturing us so much? I mean, don't they know that's backfiring or is that just part of the hubris and they think America's still uh, in a catatonic state? Well, it's part of the hubris. That's all it is. And who are they to tell us what to do? Now, just Tony Blair coming out and saying how bad it would be if Trump or Sanders, he mentioned both of them. Who's this war, little war criminal shooting his mouth off? Mind your own business. And oh, by the way, it's not only Saudi Arabia. They're coming out of Kuwait. They're coming out of Dubai. All of them are all coming out against Trump. What is he going to do, upset the military industrial complex? I don't know. But what business is it of theirs? How dare they tell us, mind your own business. Could you handle that one? And then, again, on the same, in the reverse, we should mind our own business in other countries. Well, that's what you've always said. And that's part of globalism is it gets to where we are so controlled by foreign countries and their elites. And basically the elites of the world, China, the U.S., Europe, pass their populations around, uh, you know, like uh, a hooker you use in a snuff film. I mean, I mean, it's not like they're just passing us around. They're hurting us. They're putting cigarettes out on us, if you want to use that allegory. Great points, Daniel. We'll talk to John, Dave, Mr. X, Mark, and others. Straight ahead with Gerald Salente. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Our backup site's prisonplanet.com. Our main site's infowars.com. Our nightly news site is key. It's infowarsnews.com. And by the way, they hate our websites. They're doing everything they can to shut them down, so spread the word. It's a 24-hour sale. We launched it yesterday at the start of the show, so technically it should have ended at 11 a.m. today. But we're sending it through midnight tonight. It's coming down at midnight. 30 to 40 percent off. The freshest, highest quality storable food out there. Infowars Select. Infowarsselect.com. It's my Patriot Supply. It's been our sponsor for many years. They're super high quality. It's just private labeled, so I can get around contract rules and offer it even lower than anybody else. Uh, and it, we always have the lowest price, period. 
even off their really low price for high quality food. We only do this a few times a year. We have to get special authorization to do it. 30 to 40% off InfoWarsStore.com or call toll free 888 253 3139 with a 4.5 star review by a third party site power reviews. Unprecedented. It's just good to have. I'm not saying you're going to need it. I hope you don't need it, but now more than ever, I've been getting prepared because the system doesn't want us to be self-sufficient. They want us to be totally dependent. Let's see who's been holding the longest here. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to, let's just go to Mr. X in FEMA Region 6. I guess that might be Texas. Um, what is the 25th Amendment? I, I, I forget some of those higher amendments. What's your question or point, Mr. X? Okay, uh, thank you, gentlemen and gang and team and all that good jazz. Everybody keep just doing the hard work that you're doing. Stay awake, stay focused. 25th Amendment, question. At what level degree, at how many people, at what extent of upon millions, hundreds of millions of people, do we know this organized gang of criminals and nothing but corrupt system is going to have to kill to say that we obviously have a corrupt leader to say that he's not sane? This obviously come out of the news as well by several psychiatrists stating that this guy has got several issues that are just way off whack to say how can he be in charge of so many people. Sure, I got your question. I appreciate your call. And, of course, the 25th Amendment was passed in uh, J July of 65, ratified in 67. The 25th Amendment changed a portion of Article 2, Section 1. Section 1, in case of the removal of the president from office or his death or resignation, the vice president shall become president. And uh, before they had a different way of doing that. Uh, so I guess the caller was getting into why can't, uh, you know, we remove President Obama or uh, I shouldn't have hung up on the caller. He was just so excited. I couldn't understand him. I'm not sure what he was getting at there about the 25th Amendment. Uh, but, uh, you know, if I don't want Obama to ever get shot or hurt because it'll turn him into a martyr. God forbid that happened. But at the same time, look how bad his vice president is. Uh, where do you think he was going with that, uh, Gerald Salente? Well, I think he was saying, you know, Obama's out of his mind and he should go. And I think you know, if, if they're all out of their mind. They're a bunch of psychopaths and sociopaths. By their deeds, you shall know them. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm really good at killing people. That's what he was quoted as saying with his drone strikes. He never denied it. It's in a book. So to me, if somebody said that, I'd call the guy a psychopath. Absolutely. And again, and then there's Hillary Clinton, you know, that famous one, we came, we saw, he died. He, he, how happy she was when she heard. These are off. like villains out of a uh, out of a science fiction movie. Let's talk to Bill in Ohio. we got about a minute and a half, Bill. Uh, what's your point for Gerald Salenti? Hey, guys, I appreciate you um, taking my call. Hey, uh, it's kind of a comment. I wanted your opinion. Uh, and, Alex, I wanted to thank you a while back. I, I am the guy who... Did the Marine veteran and friends confront Hillary at book signing? Uh, you guys played it on your show, and the hits have gotten crazy. I remember. The reason why I did that, yeah, and I appreciate it. Uh, the reason why I did that was to show people that you could confront her in a respectful way. You were not going to get thrown out. I, I'm a Marine, and it, it just was seared in my DNA, and, and thank God you really got me out on her. Anyway, my, my comment is this, guys, is I think what we've done is if people would educate people how, to, and that's the reason why I did the video, was to how to get your point across and get more out of this. Exactly. Um, Don't do like Black Lives Matter and go stop people's events. Go to the events when they take questions or whatever. Get in there and expose what's happening. And if enough of us do that, it'll bring the system down. It's on the edge already. We'll be back. We'll be back with five more minutes with our guests. Thank you. Moving quick here. We're going to go into the next segment and continue taking your phone calls and covering a bunch of news that's breaking, uh, like these two articles. Trump, first and only candidate to qualify as GOP nominee. Trump meets delegate threshold for GOP's Rule 40. What they're talking about, that's a certain threshold to even be considered. They're talking about taking people that don't qualify under Rule 40 and letting them come and uh, take... Uh, the primary from, and that's in another article by Kurt Nemo. RNC says delegates not bound to primary votes. We already knew that, but they're openly saying they're getting ready to steal it. And nobody said an article on this that I could see. It was buried in an article. Federal Reserve gives money to Hillary, Cruz, and nothing to Trump. That is another huge populist endorsement against the private foreign banking cartel. Certainly it is for me. 
Uh, you know, there are articles like Federal Reserve official under fire for donating to Hillary. There's other articles mentioning who the Federal Reserve gave to and who their employee union gave to. It's the employee union, but the union directs where it goes from the top people. And that was, again, to Hillary, none to Trump. Uh, that tells me everything I need to know, Gerald Salenti. Well, you know, you talked about the Federal Reserve. I don't know. I, th this came out last week. Fed President Dick Fisher admitted, quote, the Fed front-loaded an enormous market rally in order to create a wealth effect. He said that a few months ago at the anniversary of when they began this scheme of quantitative easing and zero interest rate policy just a week and a half ago, he told CNBC, quote, we injected cocaine and heroin into the system you know, to enable this wealth effect that he admits didn't work. And he says, quote, now we are maintaining it with Ritalin. And Fisher also confirmed that the, quote, the Fed is a giant weapon that has no ammunition left. So in thinking about the Federal Reserve and using those words, heroin and cocaine, isn't that illegal? Heroin, cocaine, and that's all this was. It's, it's injections Heroin and cocaine injections to keep the money junkies alive. And by the way, the Federal Reserve's been caught. I remember the AP when I was first on there in 96. Uh, the Texas Fed in San Antonio got caught with multi-billions in cocaine money in it. So they also launder the money physically, but then also have the allegory of injecting us with heroin and cocaine. So is it any surprise that they're backing the people that support them, that created, they, I mean, the... Look what, the, look what the Clinton administrations did for the Federal Reserve and the whole banking system. You remember that? What was it? Alan it's amazing. Greenspan. It's amazing. Ron Paul really should, and I get he's a purist. He should really come out as a populist, just as an anti-establishment move for Trump. And then I guarantee you Trump would adopt a lot of his policies. I know he admires Ron Paul. Uh, I know that when Rand attacked, who I also didn't like, uh, attack Trump. Trump hit back. And so I know, you know, if somebody called my son a weasel and a wimp and an idiot. You know, I wouldn't like it. But I think that uh, those three ought to reconcile because this is really important. Let's talk to Mark in Illinois. He wants to talk about Trump and the media real quick. We're almost out of time. OK, very good. Yeah. Um, w with you guys having shows like you have, you know, with Mr. Soros, you know, Stone Zone and, and your, cell, your show, why couldn't Trump, you know, using the media like he's got, refer to his website where he can have us go to that. I'm sure there's just millions of folks that just use mainstream media. Well, sure. Trump Trump sends out links and stuff on his Twitter to tens of millions. And he's come on the show and others. And he is using a lot of, uh, you know, alternative media, new media. He, uh, he is doing that. But Trump, Trump, Trump's getting more hardcore as he goes. And he isn't fully on board with, you know, with our ideas. But uh, clearly he's got the system upset. I appreciate your call. Closing comment on that, Gerald Salente. Well, oh, yes, he does. And again, this shows you the uh, the uh, opportunity for a new direction. And to me, by the way, the only way it's really going to happen is with a new third party. Again, you put the, more of the same as the again. And Trump, I think, is that third party candidate and possibly something could happen from it. But to me, the Republicans and Democrats, sure. I've had enough of them for the rest of my life. Do you think he's in danger of being assassinated? Absolutely. Yeah, I think more than Lincoln or Kennedy, anybody, I think, boy, I tell you, he better... Because the media keeps bringing up, you know, this, this whole hate thing the, that they keep doing. They're pushing it. Good, good point.